first on five. The Centers for Disease Control is trying to contact nearly 150 passengers and crew members who may have been exposed to Ebola. They were on board the same flight as a Texas nurse who was diagnosed with Ebola the next day. The 132 passengers were on Frontier Airlines Flight 1143 from Cleveland to Dallas-Fort Worth on Monday. Now this is video of a jet similar to that one. The hospital worker was caring for the Liberian man who died of Ebola last week at a Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital in Dallas. What's a big concern is they're not sure how she contracted the Ebola virus. The hospital and the Centers for Disease Control is going over protocol in search of answers. Now, the first nurse to get Ebola, Nancy Pham, remains in good condition at Dallas Presbyterian. She was also a member of the medical team caring for Thomas Eric Duncan. While it's not clear how Pham caught the virus, a National Nurses Union says that several unidentified nurses at Texas Health told them the hospital was not prepared to treat the Ebola case. We had our own scare here locally last night. A young woman was admitted to USA Medical Center after complaining of Ebola-like symptoms. Health officials determined she did not have Ebola. They held a press conference today to go over the process that led to that diagnosis. News 5's Ashley Knight's in the studio with that story. Ashley? That's right, Devin. Officials with the Mobile County Health Department and the USA Medical Center say they're satisfied with their performance. From the first responders to the staff at USA Medical Center, everyone did their jobs and followed correct procedures. It started yesterday around 2 p.m. when a young woman showed up at the health department with gastrointestinal symptoms. The woman spoke Swahili, so there was a language barrier, but they did establish that she had been in contact with family who had traveled from the Congo. However, it was over 40 days ago. Talked to uh, our colleagues at the University Medical Center about further evaluation. Uh, they agreed to evaluate the patient. Uh, and we were making arrangements for transportation. Officials say then her story began to change. The patient originally was going to drive herself to the hospital, but the decision was made to call an ambulance. One was outfitted according to protocol just to be on the safe side. We had a special room that we prepared in the emergency room. Uh, we took the precautions of uh, moving all the patients out of the emergency room and going on diversion. Uh, again, being cautionary um, and, and making sure that our patients as well as our staff were prepared and safe. A physical exam was conducted by an ER physician and a member of nursing staff. They also asked questions following the CDC guidelines, questions that determined the Ebola condition did not exist. She hasn't been in a high-risk area recently in the last uh, month or 21 days. She got living mobile for seven years, for one. Nobody had visited her from Africa or from high-risk areas. Clinically, she was stable, and her laboratories didn't show any evidence of infection. Now, when this patient was admitted, the hospital went on diversion, which means patients would have been diverted to other area hospitals. This raises a concern since USA Medical is the only level one trauma center in the area. They say that fact is something they'll have to take a look at and create an action plan for should there be another instance like this. As for the woman's condition, doctors told us her symptoms were something she's experienced most of her life and that they are not viral. Live in the studio, Ashley Knight, News 5. Thank you, Ashley. Well, according to the World Health Organization, the Ebola epidemic in West Africa will get worse before it gets better. The Ebola epidemic is still spreading in Guinea, Sierra Leone and Liberia, and projections show there could be between 5,000 and 10,000 new cases a week in early December. The death toll so far in the outbreak has reached nearly 5,500 from a total of almost 9,000 cases. The WHO says they will pass the 9,000 mark by the end of this week. Well, when it comes to Ebola scares, Mobile is far from alone. Hospitals across the country are dealing with similar false alarms. News 5's J.B. Buno joins us live in the Web Center. And J.B., it seems like these false alarms are pop popping up everywhere. Yeah, Devin, in just the last 24 hours alone, there have been similar Ebola scares in Houston, Texas and West Palm Beach, Florida, in addition to the one in Mobile last night. And there have been many others across the country this week. The CDC says they're receiving 800 phone calls daily from hospitals reporting patients with Ebola-like symptoms. Now, the big problem here is that early Ebola like symptoms or a fever or a headache or a sore throat, some of the most common symptoms of the flu or even the common cold. 
And these false alarms, they all began after Thomas Duncan, the initial Dallas patient, was diagnosed, confirming that mass media reports are really fueling this you know, Ebola paranoia. So with symptoms being so common, doctors have to rely on their investigating skills, asking patients where they've been, who they've been in contact with, to help determine if it's a possible Ebola threat.